Welcome back to Guna Fanzine TV in the shadows of the Emirate after Arsenal's 1-1 draw with Sheffield United at the Emirates on Saturday afternoon. I'm here with Dan the Man Mountain, who's come from uh, Mikel Arteta's press conference in his position as um, Arsenal reporter for the Islands Gazette. And I've come from, equally I've come from Mikel Arteta's press conference as my position as the Arsenal correspondent for Varvel. Got so we just the got there in the end, <laughs> yes, got there in the end. Um, we're just going to have a quick chat about... Um, I'll take this press conference and what we thought and um, and take it from there, really. So, obviously, it was a very, very disappointing result in terms yeah. of Arsenal's um, not picking up three points with um, with the late um, equaliser by John Fleck for Sheffield United. Well, I mean, what was your take on Arteta today? You you give it you give it first and I'll have a bit um, of a chat as well. I think he was just as disappointed as we all were, really. I mean, it was his opening line, wasn't it? He said he was very disappointed and he thought we should have won. Don't really agree with the fact that we should have won. I think a draw was a fair result. Yeah. But I can understand the disappointment and the frustration. Although... There are they are doing things that he's asked them to do, which is a promising sign. He's obviously had a lot to work on. He mentioned, you know, he's inherited a situation that wasn't good, and they're trying to work on things. So it is going to come with time, but yeah, disappointing. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, we, we we literally had a chat during during the game as well in the press box, just about a, a couple of technical adjust technical adjustments that um, Arteta had sort of enacted, um, yeah. particularly for me with um, Granite Xhaka dropping back into the back line. Yeah. Um, to sort of cover for David Luiz when he went forward. It, for me, when we were having a discussion about it and, and during the game, and it looked like he was playing a, a back five at one stage to sort of yeah, mirror weird, Sheffield United, yeah. but he obviously wasn't. But at the same time, the fact he was telling Xhaka to drop really deep so Luiz could go forward, that, that was a really good um, little adjustment there, I thought. What did you think about that? Um, I think it worked in a way that helped Arsenal get out from the back and get forward, but I think they lost control of the game because of it. Do I you think, think really? Yeah, I think that's probably part of the reason why they conceded an equaliser. Really? Yeah, I just think they didn't. They could have had more control of the game. I mean, it's been one of the big criticisms under Arteta is that in second second half of games so far under, and they've lost control of games. They did it again today. I thought, and when you're in that, in that situation, you wanted like you need to see more of the ball basically control it. I don't think they did, and I think that's probably because they were a man short in the field basically. But wasn't it aping what um, Sheffield United do effectively with um, Chris Wilder, where players switch positions? It's almost yeah. a, a sort of poor man's um, total football, really, where where players are more fluid in a more fluid tactical formation I, I really like that because the, the, prior to that with, certainly under Emery towards the end they, they were really rigid really stiff not thinking for themselves I, I thought it was quite good that he'd done that but what, what did you take on that well yeah interest. but un, under Chris Wilder they start they start up with three centre backs so you don't lose a man in midfield they do but they also have two wide, wide wing backs who, who slot as a straight back five I think I don't think it's a three at the back yeah, I think it's a five that, yeah that's what I'm saying they have three centre backs they don't have to drop a man from midfield into defence to make the five to then lose control in the middle of the park but why do their midfield look so much more like, like they've got more numbers then basically because it's quite strange isn't I it st- I, I, can't, I can't explain that yeah. I can't um, yeah. I, yeah. Th- I think it probably is the way that the full back sometimes go narrow and you know kind of block things in the middle and the centre backs do push on as well the two outside centre backs so yeah I mean it was a bit of a chess game in a way tactically today I think Sheffield tonight probably came off a bit better at the end tactically they committed more men forward and obviously got the goal so yeah frustrating really but the Xhaka role was a bit weird for me Okay, well, I quite liked it, but there you go. Anyway, it's, what do we what do we know? It's, it's obviously Arteta who's the boss, and um, we like I say we've just come from his press conference. What else did he say today? He obviously talked about Martinelli. Was asked about Martinelli. Yeah. The, the word that stretched, like, sort of, just came out for me was impressive. I tweeted that. I think you did as well. Um, he was impressive today, wasn't he, Martinelli? And, and Arteta spoke about him, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, he, he said in his program notes Arteta that he wanted someone to step up. Obviously, with the Bamiyang suspended, and Martinelli did that today. I mean, we sent the podcast on Monday, didn't we? Who was going to come in in place of him? We all said Martinelli, it has yeah. to be. And he obviously got the goal today. The thing that I really like about him, he gets you off your seat straight away. He, you know, he's got that energy, he drives at people. He, you can see he wants to go forward every time he gets the ball. So, yeah, another impressive performance from him, obviously doing really well in front of the goal. But it's the stuff he does off the ball for me as well that really impresses me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we'll go on to our take on Martinelli. But obviously, Arteta spoke about him in glowing terms, really, because he said, you know, he's obviously come back from the injury that he picked up at Everton yeah. just before Christmas. Um, said he's a lad, he's a young lad, he's a talented lad, he's a, he's a really. Um, he's, a, he's a future prospect, basically, but he liked what he did today, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, I mean, everyone should be a fan of him. Basically, he's a, he's the kind of footballer that every fan should love. Yeah, just the way the way he plays, bases, determination, his effort, and he's got such a bright future ahead of him. And I think 
in the hands of Mikel Arteta, he's got someone who will help mould him and shape him and get the best out of him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just a word on Chris Wilder as well. We've obviously seen Chris Wilder's press conference. I thought he spoke really well today. Um, his, his, his team were really well organised as ever because they obviously were in the in the one all defeat of Arsenal back in October. But uh, he just really impressed me today. What, what I did think was slightly disingenuous was when he asked, he was asked about the Pepe foul in the second half, and he yeah. basically did a venger. He said he didn't see it. What was your take on the, on the Pepe foul? I, well, I mean, we spoke about it, didn't we, off camera? We said if that's the kind of foul that's committed outside the box, it's a free kick. Yeah. So then why? Why, when it's in the box, is it not a penalty? I yeah. think Pepe was looking for a little bit. I think if you watch it back, the way he plants his left foot, it's kind of a bit unnatural. It kind of breaks his stride to put it where he does, so he goes over. But, I mean, if you if there's contact in the box like there was, it should be a penalty, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then why not book him for diving if he didn't give a penalty? That's what I don't understand. Well... I don't know. It was one of really weird for me. I think it should have been a penalty, basically. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very strange one. That. What else did Arteta say? We've obviously just come from his press conference. Oh, I can't. He didn't say too much, was it? It was a bit underwhelming, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think it was just his frustration really shining through. I don't think he wanted to say much, particularly. Uh, yeah. There was a bit on Reese Nelson, which sounds a bit concerning as well, wasn't there? About his injury. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, we, we, I was in um, Arteta's press conference this week at London Colney, and he, he spoke um, in. in Big depth about in depth about um, Reese Nelson basically, mm-hmm. basically saying he was a talent, but he had to work harder. He had to apply himself yeah. more. He, he was basically bigging him up ahead of today, and then obviously Nelson's picked up a hamstring late on potentially Friday. It was a bit that, that saw him out, and he, obviously he was talking about the doctor today saying he's still being assessed, and um, there's there's no real time frame on how long he's going to take basically. And he said that was disappointing, the, didn't he? The way he worded it was a bit weird for me because he, st- he said there was an incident in training. Yeah. So, Sounds yeah, I, I did think weird. that as well. Yeah, as opposed to yeah, it doesn't look good. Yeah, which yeah, is obviously really concerning. But the fact that it's an incident in training sounded a bit bizarre to me. Yeah, I, I think I it was just a, that, I think it was just a strange use of a word that shouldn't have been used, basically, yeah. rather than any sort of darker, darker hint. At yeah. Maybe, a, maybe a, <laughs> God knows what, basically. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it does seem like Reese Nelson will be out for a while, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, yeah, just I mean, what else did you take from Arteta's press conference today? Um, just again, he, he spoke. Obviously, didn't say as much as he normally does, but he speaks clearly, and you know what he's saying, basically, which is good to which hear. Which is a change of memory, isn't it? Really? Well, obviously, yeah. I mean, we've said that time and time again, haven't yeah. we? But it's good to good to have a decent communicator, which obviously, hopefully, comes across well in the dressing room as well as in the press conference. Yeah, yeah. And he was asked briefly about Chelsea in the in the, in the public press conference um, ahead of the embargo stuff, basically. And he, he just it's a big game for Arsenal, isn't it, on Tuesday? Yeah, massive, massive. I mean, we were looking at it before kickoff, saying you beat Sheffield United today, and you're within one point of them, and then. Hopefully Chelsea lose at Newcastle. That's going on at the moment. Don't know what's happening. Yeah. But you know that we, I think we missed an opportunity today, and hopefully we can claw that back against Chelsea on Tuesday. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we'll be in the press box at Stamford Bridge on Tuesday, reporting on the game. I think there's a press conference at London Colney on Monday afternoon to uh, to discuss the game as well. So we're looking forward to that too. But um, yeah, I'll tell. You, I mean, he, he also said which I thought was slightly disingenuous. He said Arsenal should have won the game. I'm not sure about today. They should have closed out the game, certainly. But in, in terms of the performance itself, I thought they dipped significantly in the second half, certainly in yeah, terms I of agree, fitness. Yeah. The interesting thing was, Arteta said that Arsenal deserved to win the game and then Chris Wilder kind of agreed with him and said, you know, if we'd have won the game today, I don't think it would have been deserved. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what... I'd, Obviously, you know, they're two, two really good managers and respect their opinions, but I don't. I think a draw was a fair result, so I don't think I, I yeah. deserve to win. Yeah, I, I must be. I thought that was a bit strange for Chris Wilder because he seemed slightly downbeat. I, I thought he'd be a bit more bullish in terms of the fact that his, his Sheffield United team have taken four points out of uh, six from Arsenal yeah. this season. But um, he's an honest bloke, and that's, that's what strikes yeah. me about him, having, having seen him this season now. And um, yeah, he, I, he was basically saying Sheffield United didn't deserve to, to pick up all three points. Well, I mean, they were certainly organised, they certainly defended well, they were hard to break down, they, they were well worth their work. Their, their yeah, point, definitely. but um, yeah, I think he's probably right. But at the same time, like you say, I don't think Arsenal deserve to win. So when Arteta says, you know, maybe Arsenal should have had three points, I think that's more frustration and disappointment, isn't it? The yeah, fact yeah. they've dropped two points basically. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks to Dan the Man for uh, for coming from Arteta's press conference along with myself. Um, like, comment, share. You've heard our view and, and our take on um, coming from Mick Arteta's press conference. Now, let us know what you think. Um, more to come from Arsenal, more to come from ourselves. We've got a podcast this week. We'll obviously be at Stamford Bridge on Tuesday. We'll have further Max reaction and Dan's, Dan's player rating shortly. So um, thanks for watching and um, see you soon. Cheers.